We're getting ever closer until the force of the First Order awakens. Let's talk this week's episode of Resistance. How you get so big to do food of this kind? Hello and welcome back in. As always, I'm really excited to talk about this episode with you. Please be aware this is a spoiler-filled review of Star Wars Resistance, The Core Problem. Please make sure you watch it for yourself before you watch this review. I gotta say, I'm usually one to kind of get into character breakdowns and really review the episode, but there's just so much that happened that I want to analyze as opposed to really just say how I felt about it. So we're gonna get the, the review portion of this review out of the way, and then we're gonna get down to the actual analysis. The short version is, great episode, action-packed, Poe was back, there was all sorts of First Order information, everything I wanted. If you're not a fan of Bumbling Kaz, there's gonna be a couple of moments you don't like, but to be honest, all of that is outshone by how truly amazing the rest of the episode is, because ultimately this week was about a lot of lore and building towards The Force Awakens. But with that, Let's get into the actual details because there's so much I want to discuss with you guys. Firstly, we are now butting up right next to The Force Awakens. This is the mission where Poe comes back to take BB-8 with him so that he can officially go and start into Episode 7. He leaves at the end of this episode to go to Jakku to find Lor Salteca and uh, get involved with all that is gonna go on there. We knew this was coming eventually. We would eventually lose BB-8. As I thought, BB-8 has been replaced with CB-23, who will become Kaz's new droid companion. Just from a cool connection standpoint, while I myself have not read all of the Poe comics, uh, I've seen a lot of people post on various social medias, including Twitter, uh, that there's a panel from one of the issues where Poe actually talks about having to go somewhere to pick up BB-8 so he could do the Jakku mission. And uh, a lot of people have assumed that this is a direct connection to Star Wars Resistance, and that was just a cool little thing to see how all the different Star Wars stories kind of weave into and play off of each other. And then the big thing, Starkiller Base and more stuff about Starkiller Base. That's what everything's been kind of leading to. We have seen Starkiller Base several times in the show. We know that's the big dirty secret that the First Order has. Of course, part of that is that the First Order has a, a fleet or a sizable army at all. And we found out last week that there seems to be a lot more of them in numbers than the Resistance has any idea about. Although they must realize that it has some kind of army because we've seen them before in this in these episodes themselves, never mind things like the Poe comic and other materials. Really, to me, all roads lead to the Starkiller base throughout this show. There's little things that have come up. The signal from Sector 6, there's materials that they were using to build the army. The episode a few weeks back where Kaz had to team up with Bitey to try to stop the bad guys from getting away with a super drill. That probably had to do more with mining resources used to provide things for the military more than Starkiller Base itself. I don't think that drill actually has to do with what we saw in this episode, but ultimately I think it's about how the Resistance has no idea that something like Starkiller is coming. When we saw this area in the trailer, I thought this might be a testing range, a place where the Starkiller Base or a prototype Starkiller Base had shot planets because we saw the one that was completely split. Now what we saw in this episode is it was actually the process of practicing, practicing coring planets the ability to like go into the planet and take out a giant chunk of it so that you can actually build the weapons facility inside of it, or at least that's how I interpreted it. Uh, I don't think that they're actually just mining through the center of the planet because there's no reason for that. Like if you're gonna mine at that point, why not mine all of the planet? Why make a perfect cylinder through the middle? To me, this is largely about just places where you're testing how to actually drill into the planet itself. What was really cool about this to me is we see Kaz and Poe fly into one and they deal with the gravity well, which is of course as they enter the planet, the planet still has its own gravity. They have to deal with a, a situation where they're flying in no gravity and then going on through say the north pole of the planet and exiting through the south pole of the planet uh, and how up and down are going to change while they're in the middle of all of that. This to me adds a lot to The Force Awakens where Poe is able to just kind of fly inside of Starkiller Base and fly around and shoot the oscillator and do all of that cool stuff. Not something I ever questioned at the time, but you know, he has flown inside of a planetoid before. So this is kind of adding to how he was able to do so much in The Force Awakens is he had practice he didn't even know he was getting. Beyond that, clearly the First Order was worried about guarding this place and anybody finding it because they left a probe droid behind. A probe droid that can make a quick call to Von Reg, who can just come right back and defend the base. And so this is clearly something where the First Order doesn't want anybody to see what happened there. Partly because we see the settlement that was completely wiped out and obviously that would get some attention, but also because a giant donut planet is going to also cause people to scratch their heads. And, and so this is something that the First Order would want to protect 
effect. And I do think that this could be part of the reason why they want the Colossus, part of the reason why they want Castellon, the planet that it's on. We were told last week that it was about shipping uh, lanes and like fuel supplies. But then in this week's episode, Poe talks about how it's it's not big enough for it to be just about that. And then Kaz posits that it's less about the First Order needing the fuel, that it's more about the Resistance needing the fuel. And I think all of that is true. I just think there's many reasons why they would want co the Colossus. And I think part of it, and this is the same thing I thought about with the signal of Sector 6, is it's the proximity to where the First Order has been working on all of these things. If the Resistance has a presence on the Colossus, they're more inclined to fly to these different areas and see what the First Order is up to. If the First Order controls Castellan, then it's going to be harder for the Resistance to kind of get in there and see what's going on. And I do think that will be part of the reason, although ultimately the fuel and the, the, la the hyperspace lands is probably the biggest reason. Now, about the planet itself and the settlement that I had already talked about, there's a pretty gigantic connection there. When I was watching the episode, I noticed this symbol on top of a, either a temple-like structure or a city center-like structure. But this symbol is the same symbol that we found on the little piece of wood that was with the children from Tahar. Now, to me, this makes me th think that this planet was Tahar. It's the, the most logical thing. It's possible that this is a religious symbol and or a cultural symbol. Uh, I know a lot of people think that the the children from Tahar are going to end up being force sensitive so it could be like a forced church symbol and that this place had the same church as Tahar. I just think that's getting a little convoluted. I think in this case the most obvious thing is the answer and that this could be Tahar but ultimately I don't think that information has been released yet. But on top of that it's clearly close to the Colossus and it would make a lot more sense on how two kids could get away from the planet and find someplace safe. You know, they're not going to want to go all the way to the other side of the galaxy. They can only get so far. I think it's going to be important that Kaz kept a hold of that little teddy bear-like toy and I think that ultimately one of the two kids from Tahar are going to recognize it. And then the final note I really want to talk about is Tam. So at the end of the episode, Kaz comes back after mysteriously disappearing again, missing out on work again. Yeager is not mad again. And this time, instead of having BB-8, he has a different droid that no one else has met before. And his story is that he somehow got around the First Order to go to Takudana to get his droid repaired. Now, Takudana, of course, is the planet where Maz Kanata is from. I, I would assume there's a lot of things there, but it just doesn't strike me as this is where I'm gonna go to get my droid repaired, especially because wouldn't Flix and Orca be able to repair just about anything? So his story doesn't hold a lot of water, and Tam can tell that. There was a lot of discussion last week about Tam being a First Order sympathizer, and, and what's gonna take for, for Tam to kind of come around and see that the First Order for who they are. But I think another thing that's going to make it hard for Tam to kind of come around is the way she's being treated, especially by Yeager. Remember, she and Yeager had a really good thing going before Kaz showed up. In Fuel for the Fire, Tam was calling Yeager out for letting Kaz get away with so much stuff, and then Yeager called Tam out back and said, well, I let you get away with a lot of stuff. So they, they have this really strong mentor-mentee relationship, and now all of a sudden Yeager has brought in Kaz and pulled him under his wing, and is treating him like one of his bestest bud mentee people. Kaz is not only kind of taking the spot next to Yeager, but he keeps taking Tam's ship, and it's just all of these different things, and I think this is going to be part of what keeps driving Tam away. And I understand that Kaz and Yeager probably feel like they can't trust Tam at this point, because she is sympathetic to the First Order. At the same time, we saw her heart move, at least a little bit, when the kids from Tahar explained their story to her. Tam just keeps getting upset that she's being brushed aside by her mentor, by her boss, by someone she looks up to, and by her friend. And understand that Tam is such a loyal friend. She is somebody that would go and do anything for her friends. I mean, last week, she was somebody who thought the First Order wasn't all that bad, and yet she was acting against the First Order because it's what her friends needed. That's how loyal she is. And a lot of times when you have somebody like that, that has that much devotion to their friends and that much devotion to somebody they, they care about, when it's not not only not reciprocated, but when it feels like that trust and loyalty is betrayed, they tend to act rashly, understandably. I mean, that's that's entirely within the realm of human emotion. So what I think might happen here is Tam, who's feeling continuously ostracized by the people she trusts and the people who don't like the First Order, I think something could go down and 
that could drive Tam to the First Order even more. And we know from the mid-season trailer that she's gonna kind of end up amongst the First Order. It looks like she might be getting arrested, though we don't fully know what's going on. But there you go, that's my thoughts. I think we're seeing a whole lot more about the construction and how Starkiller Base came to be, more about what's going on with the First Order. I think we're setting up some really intense character beats going forward. We're coming nearer and nearer to the end of the season and there's so many big things including Hux's speech that we have seen in the trailer that hasn't happened yet and I'm really excited to see what happens from here. So with that please leave me a comment on your thoughts about everything that's happened and what you think is going to happen from here. Make sure you're following us on the various social media platforms. We're always excited to talk to people wherever we can, whenever we can and there are clearly big 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 things ahead so until next week keep it real and fly casual. Cooking can be fun!